Now we are at 10.2 and we get to actually do some math and I'm really excited about that. So we're going to explain the logic of hypothesis testing. We're going to talk about um, testing the hypothesis about a population proportion and we're going to look at two different ways to do that. We're going to look at um, also a way to test the hypothesis of a population proportion using the binomial probability distribution. So we're going to do a couple of different things and I'm hoping you get it. This is um, the very end, and this is something that actually would be useful, could be useful on a final project if you choose to use it. So let's um, get started. So a researcher obtains a random sample of 1,000 people and finds that 534 are in favor of banning cell phone use while driving. So our P hat, we would do 534 divided by 1,000 to get our P hat. So do you think, does this suggest that more than 50% of the people favor the policy? Or is it possible that the true proportion of registered voters who favor that policy is less than 0 0.5? We just happen to pick um, a survey, we happen to survey a majority in favor of the policy? Or would it be unusual for the sample proportion of 0 0.534 or higher from a population whose proportion is 0 0.5? What is convincing or st statistically significant evidence? So we're gonna be talking about um, if we take a sample, is it going to be statistically significant enough that we can reject the null hypothesis? Remember that something that is really unusual would have a probability of less than 5%. So that is going to come into play here. A lot of the stuff that we've already learned is going to come into play here. So let's keep going. So when an observed, uh, observed results are unlikely under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true, so if we take the null hypothesis and the results that we get from our sample um, is highly unlikely, we would say that the result is statistically significant. When results are found to be statistically significant, we can reject the null hypothesis. So if something is outside of those two standard deviations, which we are not always going to be using two standard deviations, but from what we know so far from our empirical rule, if something's outside those two standard deviations, we know that it is unlikely. If something is unlikely, if we sample something and it is unlikely, then we can reject our null hypothesis. That's where we're going with this. So to determine if a sample proportion of 0 0.534 is statistically significant, we need to build our probability model. So we need to first look and see if um, we have a normal distribution, so NP times 1 minus P um, is greater than or equal to 10. So the P that we're using here is our population proportion. So what we were given for our population, not for our sample. We're not using P hat yet. So and we have our sample size N equals 1,000. That is significantly smaller than, or sufficiently smaller than the population size. So we can use the normal model to describe the variability in P hat. This means that we can use um, for our mu we're going to use 0 0.5 and for our standard deviation we are going to use remember we're using equals p times 1 minus p over n that gives us our standard deviation remember we're using here we are using p we are not using p hat so we're using our 0 0.5 because at this point we are assuming it is true so we get a standard deviation of 0 0.016. That's the standard deviation that we get. That's gonna be really important here. So here is our sampling distribution of the sample population. So we have our one standard deviation on either side of our mean, because remember our standard deviation was 0 0.016. So we have our one standard deviation. So 68% of everything is going to be right in there. And so this is our P hat. We're going to figure out where that lives in just a moment. So here's our classical approach. I don't believe that I'm going to ask you to really um, say which is the classical approach and which is the P approach. Um, so I don't believe that that's something that I'm going to make you um, make you remember, whether it's the P value approach or the, or the classical approach. But there are two different ways, and 
in the homework, I believe I'm going to ask you to do it a certain way. When you are doing your final project, if you decide to use hypothesis testing, you can use whatever you want. I usually lean more towards the classical approach. A lot of people like the p-value approach, but let's talk about classical approach first. So we may consider the sample evidence to be statistically significant if the sample proportion is too many standard deviations, let's say two because that's what we're used to, above the assumed population proportion of 0 0.5. So the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what is our z-score for our, um, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's move on. So recall that our simple random sample yielded a population or yielded a sample proportion or our p hat was 0 0.534. So we are going to do p minus mu because remember this is how we determine a z score. So it would be p minus mu divided by our standard deviation and this is the standard deviation that we just calculated. So p minus mu divided by standard deviation. So 0 0.534 minus our mu divided by our new standard deviation. Remember this right here was 0 0.016 and we got a Z score of 2.15. So we are 2.15 standard deviations above the hypothesized proportion of 0 0.5. Therefore, using the criterion we just talked about, we would reject the null hypothesis because this right here is more than two standard deviations away from our mean, we are going to reject the null hypothesis because it is statistically significant, because it is highly unlikely, the probability is very small that we would end up with something like that. Um, we would end up with this proportion of people um, saying that, um, I don't even remember what our problem was, since we it is oh, banning cell phone use by driving since it's highly unlikely that a sample proportion would yield this result because of that we can reject our null hypothesis okay so here's why it makes sense to reject that null hypothesis the standard devi or the sample proportion is more than two standard deviations away from our hypothesized so our h not our was that p was equal to 0 0.5 so our h1 is we are saying that p we believe p is greater than 0 0.5 so because our sample proportion was two deviations so our h1 our when we sampled those thousand people it was two more than two standard deviations away from the mean the area under the normal curve to the right of this so this piece right here this area was 0 0.0228 remember that our a probability less than 5%, we consider that unusual. This right here is only 2.28%, so it is definitely unusual. So if the null hypothesis were true, the null hypothesis were true, then 97.72% of all sample proportions would be less than this right here. This is two standard deviations away from our mean. This number right here, this point, 0 0.532, is where two standard deviations away from our mean is. So only 2.28% of the sample proportions would be more than this. Because ours lie in here, in that area, it would be highly unlikely for us to get that. Since it's highly unlikely, but we did get that, we can reject the whole null hypothesis. We could say that the actual population mean is probably not 0 0.5, that the actual population proportion of people that want to ban or that think banning cell phone use while driving is good is probably not 0 0.5 because we got a very unlikely result when we pulled 1,000 people. Hoping that makes sense to you. Okay, so let's move on. So our hypothesis test um, testing using the classical approach if a sample proportion is too many standard deviations from the proportion stated in the null hypothesis, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Now we are not going to be just sticking to two standard deviations away from our mean though. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second here. So here's our, the second way that we do this is with the p-value approach. So the p-value approach, um, is we determine how likely it is to obtain a sample proportion of 0 
0.534 or higher from the population whose proportion is 0 0.5. So if our sample is higher, um, is that sample or higher is unlikely or unusual, then we have evidence against the statement of the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we don't have sufficient evidence against the statement of the null hypothesis. So basically what I'm saying is that if, if um, the whatever our level of significance is, so right now we're going to say 5%, if the probability of getting this number is less than 5%, we can reject the null hypothesis. If it is greater than 5%, we would fail to reject our null hypothesis. We're going to do an example, and hopefully that'll help. We're going to do some math here. So essentially, um, let's look at our picture here. This right here, our because our number is in this area here, more than two standard deviations away from the mean, because this right here was zero point, you see what it was. This right here was less than 5%, and it lands in this area, oops, oh. it lands in this area right here, outside of those two standard deviations, outside of that 95%, because it lands up there, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so let's recall this. So our z-score was 2.15. So what we we're saying was we we're finding out what is the probability of getting a z-score greater than 2.15. Now you could look on your um, z-table. Remember your z table will require you to do one minus because the z table does less than. So whatever you would get on your z table, you can do one minus. Let me tell you what my z table gives me. Um, unfortunately, I didn't put it on your sheet, but 2.15 on my z table gave me 0 0.9842. So that, so I would do one minus that, this is from Z table. Z table. So I would do one minus that and I would get this number right here. What is the other way to do that? You guys remember that? Your other way to find out the probability that your Z score is greater than 2.15, that would be using that um, normal CDF and you would put in your range, do your norm, um, normal CDF, you would do, um, since we're doing greater, you do 2.15 to infinity and use your zero and one because it's a z-score. So you could do normal CDF and do 2.15 to E99 and then zero, one, you put that in your calculator, you guys remember that, right? I'm hoping you remember that because that hasn't been that long ago. Everything that we've done in the last couple of chapters sticks with us right now. It all culminates into this. Yeah, so in my calculator, I got 0 0.01577, so that's still 0 0.0158. So I get the same thing in my calculator. Because these results are unusual, because this number right here is less than that 5% we were just talking about, it's evidence against the statement of the null hypothesis, so we would reject that null hypothesis. So if the probability of getting a sample proportion as extreme or more extreme than the one obtained is small under, under the assumption that the statement in the null hypothesis is true, we reject the null hypothesis. Because remember, this whole time, up until we prove it's not true, we are taking the null hypothesis as fact. We call it fact until we figure out that it's not true. If we end up with a super unusual answer, then we know that it can't be true and we will reject it. Okay, let's move on. So as a reminder, our point estimate of P, our P hat is X divided by N. So X is the number of individuals in the sample and N is our, with the specified characteristic, our number of successes, and N is your sample size. So once again, remember our sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normal with mean of mu sub p hat equals p. So whatever the population proportion is, we call that our mu. Standard deviation, 
is our population proportion times one minus that P over N, and take the square root of all of that. And we can only use this if the sample is a simple random sample and NP times one minus P is greater than or equal to 10 and the sampled values are independent of each other. This is the less than 5% of the population piece. That's what that means. All right, good. This is just a rem reminder here. And as another reminder, we just talked about this in 10.1, our two-tailed test, we can determine the alternate hypothesis um, can be structured in three ways. So we have our two-tailed test right here. So if it's not, we either say that the, um, the population proportion is not what the null hypothesis is. We don't say whether it's larger or smaller. Left-tailed test is if we're saying that we believe it is smaller than the population proportion and right-tailed is if we believe it is greater than the population proportion. So P naught is the assumed value. So P naught goes with your null hypothesis. Next, we need to select our level of significance, our alpha, based on the seriousness of making that um, type one error. So remember the type one error is when we reject the null hypothesis, when the hypothesis is true. So you'll be given what that alpha is, or you'll be saying with 95% confidence or something to that effect, you'll be given what that level of significance is. You don't have to figure that out, but we're, we're basing everything on the alpha, on how, um, what is the seriousness of making that type one error. Then we need to compute our test statistic. So our test statistic is basically your z-score. So we do the, use the um, p hat minus our p naught, and then underneath we use our, to, this is that standard deviation sub p hat, this is the new standard deviation, so our p hat minus our p naught divided by that new standard deviation, that standard error there. This is how we compute our test statistic. Also, your test statistic, okay, so this is basically just finding a z-score. Because we are assuming the null hypothesis is true until we are done with this, that's why we use our p naught in our um, standard error. So our standard error, our, our new standard deviation, we use the p naught. Okay, having issues here? Uh-oh. Don't stop that. Okay, so then we need our critical value. So the critical value is the, um, you know how normally we say when something, if something's two standard deviations away from the mean, we're using that for our unusual. Here, instead of using our two standard deviations, we're going to use whatever our critical value is based on our alpha, based on that probability that the, um, of making the type one error. So whatever our alpha is, this is how we're going to find our um, critical value. So right here, this right here is from the bottom of the V table. So this is your Z table. So at the bottom, we were using our confidence intervals. We're not using that now. Now we're going to be looking here. These are our critical values, depending on if we have the left tailed, right tailed, or two tailed. We are going to use these. So these are exactly the same thing, pretty much the same thing as what we were doing before. Because um, you notice right here, 0 0.10 is 1.645 on my two tail right here. The reason that it is different, the reason that it is different with the left tailed and the right tailed is because remember, on, I'm going to erase that because you can't see. Remember on our, uh, using um, our confidence intervals, we always cut that alpha in half. So on our confidence intervals, I'm having issues here. Confidence intervals, we cut the alpha in half. Well, on our left-tailed and right-tailed, we don't cut them in half, only on a two-tailed. On the left-tailed and right-tailed, you are not cutting it in half. So you can find the um, critical value using the, in, the inverse norm. 
whatever your alpha is, you can put your alpha in there. So if I went into my calculator right now and I put in my inverse norm for 0.1 comma 0 comma 1, if I put that in there, I'm going to get the negative 1.28, which is the same thing that I have right here. So the only difference is don't cut it in half for these two. So don't cut alpha in half. So if they give you a value that's not 0 0.1, 0 0.05, or 0 0.01, then you can use your inverse norm. So remember, left tail and right tail, you don't cut it in half. And also your left tailed, because we are looking at this value over here, this value over here, um, it's gonna have the negative Z score. Okay. And then over here on the right tailed, you're gonna have the positive Z score. So here's we're comparing our critical value with the test statistic. So this is, the basics is if in a two tail, if it's either less than that, less than that critical value or greater than that critical value, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. If the left tail, if it's less than that critical value, then we're going to reject. And if the right tail, it's greater than. So let me just draw a picture here. So this might help you. Let me draw this picture. So let's say that my critical value is right here. This is going to be a left tailed. So those, I don't know, negative 1.645 is my Z. So if I have a value, let's say that my, if my, um, my critical value, my test statistic, sorry, this is the critical value, critical value. If my test statistic lands right here, then I'm going to reject. If my test statistic lands right in here somewhere, then I'm going to fail to reject. So basically what it's saying is if my test statistic is further outside, is outside of my critical value, I'm going to reject it. If my test statistic is inside my critical value, closer to the mean than it is to the critical value, so if it's closer to the mean than the critical value, you fail to reject. If it's outside the critical value, further away from the mean than the critical value, then you reject. Let's do an example. Oh, wait, sorry about that. So by hand, step three, compute your step to statistic. This is how you do it. This is a really great thing you can use on your final project. So one thing that people have done with their final projects is they have, looked up whatever the statistics were in the past. Like, let me see. Um, for example, let's say the number of dog owners that believe that they should take their dog to the dog park regularly to socialize them is 45%. I believe that value is higher. So I'm going to do I'm, you know, I found the zero, the 45% on some website somewhere. And because I believe it is higher, I'm going to use my own sample where I polled people. And then I'm going to test mine. And I'm going to, I'd have to choose an alpha because you're going to have to choose your alpha. And you can say, you know, my alpha is 0 0.055% and say, based on this, I can reject that null hypothesis. So this is just, since I just grabbed this out of the air, it's not perfect, but there's a lot of people that have used it, hypothesis testing in their final projects. It's not required, it's just something you can do. Okay, so here's a hand computation, P minus P hat divided by that standard deviation. Remember we're using the P naught, sorry, P hat minus P naught, using the P naught for our test statistic. All right, uh-oh. So using where the, the p-value approach, you do the by hand, get your test statistic, and then what you are going to do is you are going to figure out the probability of getting that test statistic. You figure out what that probability is. So, um, so once I figure out that probability, if that probability is 0.1, 
less than my, so if my alpha, let's say I was saying 0 0.05 is my alpha. Okay, so alpha is 0 0.05. If I ended up with the probability, the probability of Z not gr uh, greater than whatever my test statistic was, or whatever my, uh, I'm having a really hard time here. Probability that my test statistic is greater than my Z naught. And if I get that, if that number ends up being say like 0 0.025, since this number right here is smaller than that number, I would reject. If this number right here ended up being 0 0.55, 0 0.055, this number right here is larger than that number, so I would fail to reject. So once again, if I end up with my p-value in here, if I end up with my probability in there, I fail to reject. If I end up with my probability out here, I would reject. It's the same thing, you're just looking at the p-values. Okay. So now using a statistical, so using your technology, you can use the calculator, you can use the, um, you can use your Z table, you can look up whatever that test statistic is, you can go to your Z table and you can look that up and see what that probability is. You can see what that probability is. So for example, 2.15, remember that was, let me just go back here. So on my 2.15, I'm sorry, let me go back a little bit. That 2.15, the probability was 0 0.0158. Because that, since that probability of my z-score being greater than 2.15 is 0 0.058, if my alpha is 0 0.05, then 0 0.0158 is less than 0 0.05, so I would reject. So the p-value is less than the, the alpha, we would reject. Then you state your conclusion. All right, so here is a new example. If in 1997, 46% of Americans said they did not trust the media when it comes to reporting the news fully, accurately, and fairly. In a 2007 poll, of 1,010 adults nationwide, 525 stated they did not trust the media. At the alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance, is there evidence to support the claim that the percentage of Americans that do not trust the media to report fully and accurately has increased since 1997? So if you want, you can go ahead and pause right here and you can go back and do the math that we just did with this to see if we can reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis or you can just do this with me right now. So if you wanna pause it, try to do this math on your own, go for it. Otherwise, you can just work with me right now. Okay. So our solution, so we wanna know, so if the, so we wanna know if P is greater than 0 0.46, but first we want to take a look at the requirements to perform the hypothesis test. This is a simple random sample because we said that it was a poll of 1,010 adults nationwide. We're assuming that it was a simple random sample. NP naught times one minus P naught is greater than 10. The sample size is definitely less than 5% of the population size. So this assumes the independence is met. So step one, so our null hypothesis is P equals 0 0.46. Our alternative hypothesis is P is greater than 0 0.46 or 0 0.46. So this is going to be a right-tailed, right-tailed test because of the greater than. That greater than tells us it's right-tailed. Level of significance, we're looking at 0 0.05. Our sample proportion, our p hat is 0 0.52. So here's how we calculate our test statistic. 0 0.52, which is our population or our sample proportion, our p hat, minus 0 0.46, which is our population proportion, divided by, this is was our standard deviation, 0 
times 1 minus 0 0.46 divided by 1010, take the square root, we got 3.83. So on your calculator, you can use one prop Z test to calculate whether or not to see whether or not you can reject the null hypothesis. And I wish I would have put this on here. Um, if you pull up the um, pull up the PowerPoint, I'm going to put what it looks like on the PowerPoint. There also is a really good video in this section. Just scroll down a little bit at the bottom of this um, of this week of week nine. Scroll down and there's a really great calculator video. I wasn't able to get the calculator video on here, but you can use stat test one minus or one prop Z test in order to do this. And it will give you the P value and yeah, and it will also give you this right here. It will give you your um, test statistic. It'll give you the test statistic and it will give you the P and then you can make your decisions. You're still gonna have to make that decision on your own. So since the right tail test, we determine the critical value of 0 0.05 level of significance to be this. This we got from the bottom of our Z table. So if I drew this out, so my critical value is right here. This is 1.645. So my critical value is at 1.645 standard deviations away from the mean. So critical value. My 3.83 standard deviations is way over here. So since your mean is here, this right here, the 3.83, is way on the other side of this. It is outside of that. It is in this critical area right here, outside of that critical value. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So looking at the p-value approach, so if I looked in my calculator and said, what is the probability the z-score is greater than 3.83? It's gonna be zero. You're gonna get, you have to do one minus, in one minus um, that binome. I'll show you how to do that in a second. So you're gonna have to do the one minus on that because the, sorry, I could see, because we're going to actually, you don't have to, if we do normal CDF, and you did uh, greater than, so 3.83 to E9901, you're gonna basically get zero. It's, I think it gives you, I don't even remember what it was. It was like, um, it, I don't remember what it said, something E to the eighth or something like that. So it's gonna basically give you zero. I think it was, a, a 6.27E8. When it has that E8 on the end, that tells you how many um, times the decimal places would move. So basically, whatever that number is, times 10 to the negative eighth power. The P value is less than the level of significance. It's basically zero. So we're going to reject that null hypothesis. So if your calculator said something, this is just a random number that I picked. 25867E8. negative You've seen this before. This means that I can move the decimal, I need to move the decimal point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So basically it's that this number right here. It is a really, really small number, basically zero. Okay, let's move on. There's sufficient evidence at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance to conclude that the percentage of Americans that do not trust the media to report fully and accurately has increased since 1997. So this is basically your answer. You do not have to type it this succinctly, but it's basically saying we reject the null hypothesis. Reject null hypothesis. Okay, so using our technology, you can see this here. This is the last slide, then you guys can Turn this off for a little bit and wait a little bit, do some homework before you hit 10.3. So because we have on this, this is a population proportion, we can use our binomial probability stuff here. So and because I have an X and an N, so remember our um, binomial probabilities here where we did 
NPX because we want greater than, because we're looking for P greater than 0 0.46, or uh, because we're doing P greater than, you need to make sure to do the one minus because it's right tailed, right tailed, use one minus, left tailed, tailed, not one minus, not one minus. So only on the right tailed because remember this will give us less than. We want, if we're doing greater than, you do the one minus. And it gave me, see, you can see this right here, 6.2105E negative five. That's this number right here. So because this number is smaller than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. So that's all I have on this. If you have questions, and I'm sure you will, send them to me through messages, send them through me, to me through emails. I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you. Bye.